What is Google doing to our minds? How is the internet affecting our memory? Anthony Carboni here for DNews, and I was talking to Mike from Idea Channel a little bit about the internet and memory, which we're both kind of fascinated with. He just released a video today about whether the internet is this permanent, complete archive we seem to think it is. You should check that out. My concern is that whether the internet is a solid, functional archive or not, we have a tendency to treat it like it is. We offload our thoughts and appointments and documents onto it. We Google facts that we need instantly. We treat it like this off-board extension of our mind. How is leaning on the internet for everything changing our actual memory. Well, we know that using the internet changes our brain. Everything changes our brain. Thanks to neuroplasticity, the more you do something, the more the areas of your brain and the connections used to do that task are strengthened. It's called Hebb's rule. Basically, cells that fire together wire together. Studies have shown that intense internet usage is making our brains better at multitasking and quick decision making. But there's also some concern as to whether we're trading off some needed cognitive skills in the process or just growing into the next phase of humanity. We think about our brain as a computer, right? Our long-term memory is a hard drive and our short-term memory is RAM. Our short-term memory can hold about two to four new facts at any moment. And if those facts are important or notable, we pass them along to our long-term memory. So the computer thing's a good metaphor. There's a problem with taking that metaphor too literally, though. We tend to think that since our brain is a hard drive, we will eventually run out of gigs. By putting everything online into our calendars, reminders, we believe that we're freeing up our memory for more important things. But here's the deal. If there's a memory capacity to the human brain, we haven't reached it. And we're not even sure there is one. While there's no way to translate the capacity of the brain into numbers, we know our brain's got about a billion neurons and each of those connects to a thousand of its neighbors. And they can all help each other to store multiple memories. So it's not that long-term memory you need to worry about. It feels like you're freeing up space in your brain because you're getting things out of your short-term memory. That bit that can only hold about two to four things at a time, according to memory researcher Nelson Cowan. But not leaving things there stops you from converting them into a long-term memory. It's that feeling of short-term overload that's really letting the internet affect us. When you're writing a paper or checking Facebook, looking at Twitter, getting an email ding, well, that's your fourth thing limit. You're, you're always putting yourself into a place where you're overloading and swapping stuff into that short-term memory. Cognitive neuroscientist Torkel Klingberg, which is quite a name, wrote in his book, The Overflowing Brain, that when we're operating at full capacity, our brain finds distractions exponentially more distracting. So the more you're bouncing around from thing to thing online, the more likely you are to leave those things behind for something new. And none of that leads to the processing of important information. If you don't process it, you don't remember it at least not in the long term. And there's some concern that because of the internet, we are wiring our brains to constantly scan for information without taking it in, losing our ability for long-term memorization. Then there's the idea of transactive memory. It's when we use friends, family, or reference materials to remember things for us. So if my friend's a history buff, I might not try to remember historical facts. I'll just ask him because I know he's there. Google is sort of an all-knowing roommate, not in the usual privacy and security way people mean when they say that. A Columbia University study showed two groups of people a list of facts to memorize. Then they told one group that the file with the list would be deleted. Later, they asked the people to recall the facts, and the group that thought they were deleted remembered more of them. In a secondary test, people were told the facts and then showed what folder they were in on a hard drive. And people were more likely to remember the folder location than the actual fact. And that goes back to that brain restructuring we were talking about. We're getting better at finding and organizing, but potentially worse at deep focus. So what does that mean? Is our memory getting worse? Or is it just changing and adapting? Socrates thought the written word was going to make us stupid, and maybe this is the same thing. Maybe we're on the brink of a whole new way of living and thinking, and our brain is just prepping us for it. I definitely feel my ADHD kick into overdrive when I'm on the internet, but I don't think it's harming my memory. What do you think? Let me know, and thanks to Mike and Idea Channel for getting me thinking about this. Check out their video too.